last time we spoke, I mentioned I'd be playing 2550 on Live at the Bike, and that's what today's video is gonna be about. Now, the only difference is I said potentially Garrett might be playing. Turns out he can't make it, but aside from that, we are playing some 2550 with a $50 big blind ante. Quite a big game, at least for me. Now, as many of you guys may know, last time I tried playing some big live stream games, it did not go very well. I didn't run good, I didn't play very well. Hopefully today we can reverse that trend. Next week I also have some big live stream games at The Hustler, so a lot of big no limit content coming up for the channel. One more thing before we get in there, this upcoming Monday, my parents asked me if I could dog sit all day. The reason that relates to the channel, since you guys probably don't care at all about that, is that I'm gonna be home or at my parents' house all day long with not much to do, so I figured what better time to have an online meetup game. So that's what I'm gonna do. This Monday, four to 8 p.m., I'm gonna be playing one, two, two, four, three, six, five, ten. pretty much all the stakes on Club GG. So if you guys wanna sign up, you wanna battle online, you wanna chat, you wanna either steal my chips or give me yours, whatever the case is, this is gonna be the time and date to do it. Many of you are already on there, but if any of you guys aren't, it's really easy to sign up and uh, yeah, it should be a good time. So I hope to see you guys on there. However, right now, I'm gonna focus on the task at hand, which is this big game inside. Let's get in there and play some cards. All right, everyone, here we go. As soon as the game started, we all agreed on keeping the straddle on, so surprise, we're actually playing 25, 50, 100. And yes, that still includes the $50 ante from the big blind, so quite the sizable game here. I sit down with $20,000 and get involved in literally the first hand dealt. There's an open from middle position to 200. I call on the button with ace six suited and the big blind calls as well. Flop comes down ace 10 8, and after the big blind checks, middle position continues with a bet of $350. I've got top pair and a potential flush draw, so I make the call, and the big blind folds. Heads up to the four of diamonds on the turn, which shouldn't really change anything, but my opponent continues betting, this time $2,000. At this point, I expect him to be holding either a very strong hand or one of the many available draws on this board. Seeing as I've got an ace myself, I think he's more likely to have one of those bluffs, so once again, I make the call and we're off to a river. The river comes the seven of spades, and now my opponent decides to fire one more bet for all his remaining chips, totaling around $7,000. And just like that, I'm in a tough spot less than five minutes into this session. Okay, what to do? On one hand, I don't really have much aside from a pathetic top pair, but on the other hand, almost every draw missed aside from Jack nine. Then again, most people don't really have the heart to bluff three times in one hand. So just because there's some missed draws available doesn't necessarily mean he would play them this way. I don't know. I think it's really close. And in those spots, I usually just go with my gut. This is pretty gross and the fact that this is the first hand of the stream might make Mariano inclined to call down a little bit lighter here than he ordinarily would, knowing that a bunch of draws have missed. Clubs brick, bunch of straight draws brick, Jack-9 does get there. And Mariano makes the call, wow. We are not even three or four minutes into this stream. In the next one, I open queen nine on the button to 300 and get called by just the straddler. Flop comes nine, eight, six, giving me top pair, but when he checks it over to me, I decide to check it back since this board is a little dicey. Turn is the queen of diamonds, and now he leads for $550. I can't really raise here after not betting on the flop, so I make the call, and we see the jack of clubs on the river. Obviously a terrible card, as any 10 now makes a straight, and to make things worse, my opponent now bets $1,250. Once again, a close spot. My hand could very easily not be the winner, 
But at the same time, he could be bluffing with a ton of stuff once I show weakness on the flop. So again, after some deliberation, I decide on a call. Interestingly enough, however, my opponent says good call and mucks his hand. I didn't know it at the time, but the graphics are showing he had a straight. So either he misread the board or the cards didn't pick up properly. I don't know. Either way, the pot was pushed in my direction and I'm not complaining. <laughs> Sam was bluffing with a with straight. Missed that he had a straight, apparently. And Mariano's going to win this one. Weird. Moving along, in the next hand, that same player opens for $200 before action gets to me in the small blind with 7-6 suited. Seems like a good candidate to occasionally use as a bluff, so that's what I do this time by making it 800 to go. Folds around to the initial raiser, and only he makes the call. Heads up out of position to a flop of King Jack 8, all red cards. Of course, I don't have anything, but I did re-raise pre-flop, so I could certainly represent some stuff on this board. I begin with a $600 bet, and it gets the job done. Later on, there's a $300 open from Paulina, aka Poker Bunny, I guess? Anyway, it gets to me in the big blind with Pocket Aces. Well, if I'm re-raising with 7-6, I'm definitely doing it with this hand too, so I make it $1,500 to go. It gets back to her and she decides to put in another raise, this one totaling $4,400. Music to my ears, of course, but considering that I think she's capable of doing this with some random hands, I decide to just flat call and go to a flop. And Mariano just calls, which I like a lot. Gives Poker Bunny the chance to bluff on runouts and they're not really deep enough that he ever really has to think about too hard about folding pocket aces. After I check, she continues with a tiny bet of 1500. Could go either way here, but I think a call is best just in case she is bluffing. So I throw in the chips and we go to a turn. The five of diamonds changes nothing. I check again, but this time she checks it back. The river is another brick. And now we have a decision between checking a third time or going for value. I think going for value is fine, but it seems to me that checking is a much better play because we give her the option to either value bet a worse hand or try to steal the pot with a bluff. He does check though. Maybe thinking that Poker Bunny has more pure bluffs here than hands like Pocket Queens or Pocket Jacks. 10 seconds. 7,000. 7, and... He makes the absolute max here. Luckily, she did have one of those bluffs this time, and we take down a pretty big pot. In the next one, action folds to me in the small blind, and I make it 300 with 6-5 of hearts. Big blind calls, and we go to a flop of jack-9-7. I bet half pot, and he calls. Turn is interesting, the 8 of spades. Giving me a straight, but any 10 makes a better one. For that reason, I just check it, but he disagrees and bets $400. I'm not folding just yet, so I call and we see a six on the river, meaning any 10 or any five is now straight. I check again, and this time he cuts out a bet of $1,000. Well, after I check the turn, he could just be bluffing with all sorts of stuff, so I guess if he's got a 10, congratulations, take my money. It turns out we end up chopping versus 8-5, so I guess it could have been worse. A few rounds later, I open Queen-10 suited and get raised by the player on my left to 900. Happy to make the call here, so that's what I do, and flop top pair on 10-5-4 with two hearts. I check it over and he continues with a bet of $1,200. Can't really raise, definitely not folding, so that just leaves one option. I make the call and we see another five on the turn. I considered leading here, but I think I'd rather do that with other types of hands. So I check again and this time he checks it back. River card is a blank and now we have a decision between checking or going for value. In this situation, I prefer a value bet since there's just so many draws that bricked out like flush draws and straight draws. Because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent called with ace high or maybe a worse pair. 
Sure, sometimes he'll have an overpair or a better 10, but for the most part, I think my hand is plenty good to disguise as a bluff and try to get some value. 4,000, pot size bet, which is really cool. I would be tempted to go smaller here. If Mariano's making it look like he has 7-6 or a flush draw that bricked, and he's gonna get paid, and Mariano is putting on a clinic here today. Another very nice pot here. Shortly after, I pick up 7-6 suited for a second time, and once again facing a raise. Just like the previous time, I decide to raise it up, so I make it 1,500, and Poker Bunny makes the call. Heads up to a flop of 10-9-9 with one club. I continue with a small bet, although I think a check is fine too, but anyway, she makes the call, and we see the deuce of hearts on the turn. On this board, I'm pretty much done with it now, so I check it, expecting her to bet, and then the hand will be over. But she checks it back, and we see another deuce on the river. Once she checks back on the turn, I feel like she can't really have that strong of a hand. So, all right, I'm interested in this pot again. The good thing about the way I've played my hand is that I would also play some over pairs this way, and that's all the excuse I need to once again fire $4,000 into the middle, except this time I'd rather get a fold. So we'll see if he wants to bluff here. It looks like he does. 4,000, another big bet from Mariano. Correctly identifying that Poker Bunny is capped here and a quick fold. So another big pot heading Mariano's way. This next hand is pretty interesting. There's two limpers before it gets to me in the straddle with pocket sevens. I make it 500 bucks. The first limper folds, but the big blind calls again. Perfect situation, right? Flop brings a bunch of bigger cards though, so I check it back. Turn card brings in the flush, so I check back again. And then the river gives me a straight somehow, so that's sweet. However, Lynn does not check it a third time, but instead bets tiny, $200. Ignore the graphics here, by the way, they're not right on this hand. She was the one who bet, not me. Anyway, I decide to raise it up. I know she could have some better straights or a flush, but I think my hand is just too strong to flat call against such a small size. However, Lynn doesn't care about any of that because she puts in another raise. A very strong play that maybe she could be doing with only the ace of hearts, but I think it's way more likely we just ran into the nuts, so I let it go. And that brings us to the last hand of the night, which I'm just gonna spoil it right now. It's the biggest pot I've ever played in my entire life. Here we go. Action folds to the small blind Danny who makes it 400. Lynn calls in the big blind and I complete in the straddle with 6-3 suited. The flop is amazing. 7-5-4 giving me the second best possible hand. Danny seems to like it too though as he continues with a bet of $1,200 and then Lynn calls the 1,200. Now it's my turn and with so many draws available, I'm gonna raise. I make it one pink chip, which is $5,000. Danny thinks it over for a while and eventually calls, and then Lynn takes her time before also calling. Suddenly, this pot has ballooned to $16,000, and we're barely at the turn, which is about as clean as it gets, the queen of clubs. They both check it over to me, and I'm for sure going to bet again. But in spots where it's difficult to be bluffing, I don't really like sizing up, so I make it $6,000, now it's back on Danny. Notice he's got around $50,000, which is way more than me. So you can imagine my surprise when he announces all in. Holy shit, seriously? Lynn gets out of the way and suddenly I have quite the decision to make. Of course, my hand is way too strong to fold, but let's just pause for a second. Doesn't it seem obvious that I could have 8-6, or even Lynn could be trapping with 8-6? I feel like those are both very possible, which leads me to believe that Danny is most likely not bluffing. It just seems like such an insane spot to try it, at least to me. However, my hand is just too strong, and I guess even though he could have 8-6, he could also be jamming with a set, maybe, so... If it's my time to die, so be it. I make the call, and suddenly we are playing an 
thousand dollar pot with one card to come. My opponent asked to run it twice. As per usual, I don't really care, so I oblige. And this is a massive, massive pot. First half of it is going to go to Mariano. Second half is going to go to Danny as he makes diamonds. And they're going to chop up an $83,000 pot. The biggest pot of the night here on Live at the Bike. Wow. Long story short, we're chopping it up against Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Honestly, I was quite surprised that he actually was bluffing, but I gotta admit, it's pretty ballsy, so nice hand, man. Shortly after this one, the stream came to an end. We did play a little while longer, but nothing crazy happened, so as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Well guys, that went about as good as it could have. I am proud to announce that tonight I was in for 20,000 and out for 47 and change. By far my best result ever in a cash game poker session. And on top of that, I was actually happy with how I played today, which isn't often the case. For all you guys who have been along for the ride since the very beginning, Thank you. It's kind of been a crazy ride, you know? What's next is next week I have uh, two other streams for The Hustler. It's gonna be a 1020 and a 2550, I think. That's gonna be the next vlog. So if you're into these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. And don't forget about that meetup game I have on Club GG the 17th. I hope to meet at least a few of you guys on there. As for myself, it's time for perhaps a celebratory dinner at Chipotle. Thank you guys for everything. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.